everyone, and thank you so much for tuning into this week's expert interview at the Academy of Cubicle Crashers. With me today is my good friend and fellow Freedom Ambassador, Anne Perry. Uh, now, before we dive into Anne's special learning that she's going to be sharing with us today, I want to tell you a little bit more about her story. So after spending her early adult years burdened by debt and suffocating in jobs that drained the life out of her, we've all had that job, uh, Anne reinvented her life. So she set up ways to work remotely while traveling around the world and has spent nearly a decade living tiny in cottages, motorhomes, and houseboats. She has built several successful businesses that have allowed her to make a difference in the world, doing exactly what she loves with the freedom to do it from anywhere. She's been nicknamed the Reality Architect and is also the founder of ELSE, a digital society offering creative ways to experience a life connected to what matters most and a simplified, simplified path to make your most inspiring dreams possible. She's going to be guiding us today on the mechanics of a breakthrough, how to crack through the invisible ceiling and step into the new reality that you know is meant for you. So you're going to be able to discover exactly where you are hitting your own ceiling, why your breakthrough is closer than you think, and how to catalyze it now so that you can finally get your most cherished dreams out of your head and into your real life. Amen. And I'm so happy you're here and excited to dive into this topic with you. Oh my gosh, thanks so much for having me. It's always so fun to be a guest with you. I feel like I on Saturday Night Live when they have the, yeah. the like repeat hosts. Like, yes, I totally. To <laughs> we are those gals, yeah. yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us from all the way from Portugal and in a time zone that works for both of us, <laughs> which is yeah. really great. Morning for you, evening for me. Um, so everyone that's watching our conversation today are these sort of bold souls, right? Uh, who dare to dream like outside of the status quo of the hamster wheel existence. Uh, but though we get really excited to really rise to meet our desires, a lot of us can be faced with the, you know, the shoulds, the can'ts, the not going to happens that are swirling around our heads. So how do we crack through our comfort zone and create our breakthrough today, Anne? Yeah. Oh, I, I, this topic is, um, so close to my heart. So I'm excited to talk about it because it's like breakthroughs. Um, you know, it's like, we've all been on the, we have been on both sides of the breakthrough. Like we can all think about something in our lives where we didn't have it. And then we had it, or it was oh. something that we strived for and we wanted. And then it's like, now it's your real life. And because we're creatures of expansion, there's probably something that you're wanting now that you don't have it yet, or you're not sure how to get there, or you feel like you're doing everything you can. And you're just like, why isn't it happening? What's wrong with me? Like, you know, what gives here? So, um, so yeah. And I want to, you asked about the comfort zone. So that's really where I'd love to start because, mm. you know, we hear all the time, there's all sorts of different sayings about your comfort zone. Like everything you want is on the other side of your comfort zone or, um, yeah, I mean, basically that I saw this one that was like a diagram and it was like, um, it showed your yes, puny cool. lame ass comfort yeah. zone. <laughs> right. And it was like magic unicorns, fairies, yeah. like everything on magic the outside happens here. Yeah. Magic happens here. Yeah. So, um, and, and there's some truth to that for sure. Right. Because it's like, if you're, but the comfort zone gets a bad rap because I don't know about you, but I enjoy being comfortable sometimes. <laughs> and also how, how many of you have, you know, had the experience where you're completely uncomfortable, but that doesn't mean you're experiencing magic and unicorns and all this stuff. So, um, and actually I just want to pause for one second as we're, as we're having this conversation, I invite you, Lydia and you cubicle crashers and myself even to think about a situation in your own life maybe where you're wanting a breakthrough or maybe a situation in the past where you had a breakthrough or a situation in the past where you, where you remember being really frustrated by not having a breakthrough. Um, so that this isn't just, um, you know, conversation, but that you can actually apply it to your situation. Um, so anyway, so the comfort zone, it's like, I've had experiences where I'm, I'm really uncomfortable, but I'm not having what I want. And so the, basically the myth of the comfort zone is just that it's not a, it's not a bad thing to be in your comfort zone. The comfort zone is actually a place of, um, it's just your current, it's like your current reality. It's, it's your, it's what fits in your life and it can be a place of rest and it can be a place of mastery and it can be a place of like, looking around and enjoying the view and, and soaking it in. Mm. Um, and yes, there's something else on the other side. And at some point you get called to that something else. Um, 
And then that's the point where your breakthrough is, in, <clears throat> excuse me, your breakthrough is inviting you through. But it's not just bloop, on the other side of your comfort zone. There's actually, um, I call these the zones of expansion. There's oh. actually numerous zones to move through and your breakthroughs on the other side. So I love that you said that because a lot of people feel like it's that one leap, right? It's like, why can't I just get off the cliff, right? Like, why can't I just get there? And it's just one yeah. step. But I love that you say there's these four zones. So maybe knowing those zones will make us feel that we're not wrong, right? Or something wrong has happened to us or we're broken in some way for not being this courageous soul. Um, what are those yeah. four zones? Yeah, and, and, and what you say is really important too because we, we often... Um, here like oh enjoy the journey blah 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 life is not a destination it's an you know it's a journey but at the same time when you're somebody who is like an ambitious person and you're like but i want like this new like i've had this idea now i want it and i want it to exist now and we can be impatient and so it can be tough to enjoy the journey or like you said we can judge ourselves like why am i not there yet what's wrong with me like this kind of thing mm. so let's talk about the zones and so they're called the zones of expansion, right? And this basically is your reality. So if you um, have, I've provided a guide for you, the Mechanics of Breakthrough guide sheet. So you might have a visual. Sure it. Yeah, so you might have a visual directly in front of you. Otherwise, you can just follow along with this visualization. So picture these. It's like you're, here's your current reality, right? You're in this big circle. And there's these four zones. The first zone, the inner piece of the circle, so kind of like the target of, a, of this circle, is your comfort zone. And so we just talked about your comfort zone a little bit. Your comfort zone is when you're like, life is going along and it's just fine. Like, it's good. Like, it can be anywhere from actually completely filled with joy. Like, this is my life and I love it and I'm comfortable with it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like that can be your comfort zone. Your comfort zone can also be, um, I, I said earlier, like a place of mastery. So maybe you've learned a new skill or you've, you're, you've achieved a new level in your business or, you know, like you've been in your, your job, you've kind of passed the learning curve and you're, you're now like feeling really confident with, you know, your skill set or that kind of thing. So it can be a place of, of mastery, maybe even teaching what you know um, and, and giving, you know, giving what you know to others. So that is what the comfort zone can be. And what happens is at some point, as you start to creep to that outer edge of the comfort zone, it starts to feel uncomfortable, right? Cause you're, you're moving toward the edge of your comfort zone and the zone that is right outside your comfort zone is what I call the zone of dissatisfaction. Ooh. So the zone and backing up the comfort zone, if you're looking at this, this visual guide sheet or just imagine in your head, like a field of daisies, it's basically like a meadow. That's the comfort zone, right? The dissatisfaction zone, on the other hand, looks more like a desert or, you know, it's just like this barren land and um, like the earth is cracking and it's not enjoyable. Like you're dissatisfied. And what, and and the reason, and this also, it doesn't feel good, right? So what can happen is when you're in the, when you're in the dissatisfaction zone is you can feel like something is not right here. Something is not working for me. I used to be happy with that and now I'm not happy with that anymore. Um, and so it can feel a little bit like a rut. You know, you can feel mm. stuck. You can feel like you're in a rut. You can feel like, um, it can just feel like something's amiss. And because we are naturally creatures of expansion, there always will be, once your comfort zone at some point has an expiration date. And so there's mm. something on the other side that calls you. And the dissatisfaction zone emerges when, basically when a new possibility emerges for you, where you're like, oh, what if something else is possible? I don't have that. Life sucks. <laughs> right. Um, and unfortunately, many, many people in the world, I know not you cubicle crashers because you're here, but you probably know somebody in your life who like, that's just where it ends. Mm. It's like, you know, like that grumpy uncle or something who's like, life sucks, then you die. You yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is, big. I don't have an uncle like that, by the way. Mm. <laughs> so all my uncles. Just in case any of Anne's family's watching. watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but it's like that, 
you know, it's kind of like, okay, I've, I've reached the end. Like life sucks. There's a rut, but what are you going to do? So you have a choice there when you're in the dissatisfaction zone. And the choice is either to stay there and basically kind of like sink back into your comfort zone. Although it doesn't really work because you're not comfortable. You already, you're already dissatisfied. You've already got this feeling like there's something more, but you can settle for that and Mm. you can just stay there. And most of the world does like, that's why most people are not happy. Yeah. (laughs) Um, or you can say there's a possibility that's calling me and I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to let it pull me, pull me to, to a new reality into a new Mm. reality. Mm. And so that's where the next zone is. <clears throat> and I think I also in that? the second zone, I think, because uh, mm-hmm. we've all been in the dissatisfaction zone many times. I mean, I have it sure. every year. <laughs> every month even sometimes, right? Personal, personally right. and professionally. Uh, I think right. a really important thing to potentially be, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm just like talking to myself right now about like yeah. tips that I have to listen to as well, is that I think at this stage is important to not to beat yourself out, out uh, up about past decisions or experiences that you are now not satisfied with. Because at some point, whatever decisions you made last year, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, was right for you at that moment in time. And now it's not right for you anymore. But it doesn't mean you, you screwed up. You know, it doesn't mean that you, oh, I've wasted my life, you know, doing this thing. And now I'm, I'm no longer happy. It's just, as you said, this new calling, right? This new reality is calling to you. And we will have lots of the, that until I think the, the day we croak, really. So totally. that is not, nothing's gone wrong. It's just you're opening yourself up to that next door. And we have to step through, I think, many, many doors in our, in our lifetime. Totally, 100%. And this is like, it's so important what you're saying, because this is where if we just know that this is just how it works, there's no bad or good. It's Mm. just mechanics, you know, like, that's what happens. Like, it's just like, you know, winter comes and the leaves fall off the trees. That's not bad. That's just what happens. Like, and then they renew, like, we're the same. There's these cycles, Mm. there's these patterns. And so, um, you know, and there's, there's the phrase healthy dissatisfaction. I think that was Bob Proctor. Mm. I heard your healthy dissatisfaction. That feeling is not a bad thing. That that's something where you're like, it's healthy, right? You're like, I'm not satisfied with the status quo. I'm not satisfied with what is that's magical because Mm. that means you're being called into something new. You're being called to create a new level of your reality, which what, what more of a powerful thing is there being human? We get to create our own realities. Like that's freaking awesome. Yeah, Um, absolutely. Yeah. The the, the idea of not feeling bad, I think is, is like, don't add an extra double whammy of a bad feeling, you know, it's like the satisfaction is already can be quite a negative feeling if you want it to be, uh, but don't add another piece of weight on top of that by regretting your decisions or beating yourself up for the decision, because all of that really has brought you to this recognition of this, right. year, I think, you know, so, uh, yeah, I love that. And I love the, the analogy of the, the seasons changing is so true. You know, it's like the way that it works, you know, we renew and we reinvent as we keep going along. So what is that right. third zone after the satisfaction zone? Yes. And, um, just real quick also, it's like, we don't need to judge where we are because mm-hmm. once you, once you see where you are, then what there is to do in each of these zones is you get to make a decision which is also a magical superpower of being a human, like under, under talked about like decisions. It's, it's like huge. We could have a whole other conversation just on the power of decisions, but you have a decision in each of these. And so the decision in the, um, in the zone of dissatisfaction again, is to like settle or sink back into your comfort zone or just wallow in it. Like we're allowed to do that too sometimes and feel sorry for ourselves. Cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe put a timer on that and then, and then you can, or the other choice is to say, um, you know what, even if you don't know what it is you want, you're just feeling like mm, something's not it. Your choice is to say like, oh, there's something new that's calling me and to recognize it as a magical, amazing opportunity. And just to recognize it at that and to be curious instead of to be um, defeated, you know, mm-hmm. that's a choice to just be curious not even having to make some big move, just be curious. And then at some point that curiosity will lead you into the next zone. So the next zone is the anticipation zone. So the anticipation zone 
on the inner edge of the anticipation zone, when you first get in there, it's kind of like, ooh, like you're starting to, you know, the idea of what you want to have is forming. And it's like that place of visioning and, um, and planning. And, you know, it's like, kind of like when you have a new business idea, it's, it's almost like easiest right when you first have the idea. It's like, mm. oh, boom, and it's this whole like empire. And then, and then of course, there's all the work that has to, yeah. to how? Up. How do I get there? Yeah, that's when it's just yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's, that's what happens when you get into the anticipation zone is it's exciting. Like there's something like that's brewing. And the anticipation zone, you know, I said that the comfort zone looks like a, a meadow of daisies. Um, the anticipation, or excuse me, the dissatisfaction zone is like a barren desert. The anticipation zone is like a chalkboard with a whole bunch of like scientific formulas on it. Right. The anticipation zone is when you're dreaming and scheming and planning and, and mapping it out. Um, so again, this is necessary, right? Like you got to kind of like wrap your brain around it and, and figure some things out and sort out the how, like it is a lot of that sorting out the how. So what can happen is as you are creeping toward the edge, outer edge of that anticipation zone is you can, that's where you move through to the next zone or you can kind of get stuck. So there's, there's like the best feelings are at the beginning of the anticipation zone, the excitement, the like something's coming, something good. Um, and then as you start to move through it, um, that's when it can become, um, it, you can get stuck with like your own mind trickery. Mm. So like, for example, you, um, and we all have our favorite flavor of mind trickery. It might be analysis paralysis. Like it might be perfectionism. Yeah. You're like, nope, I can't actually put it into the world yet. I've got to like, you know, make it a little better. Like, oh, let me change my colors or something. And then I'll launch my website or, you know, right. like that kind of thing. So we can, um, and I call this, um, creation PMS. Um, <laughs> love that pre-manifestation syndrome, creation ah. pre-manifestation syndrome. It's kind of like that before something happens, but it feels like PMS where it's kind of like, you might just be, you know, you're kind of like cranky and you're kind of oh. like, what the, you know, what the heck is going on? And, and you're just like, oh, you know, so you're probably very and, exhausted from all the overthinking and over planning. Overthinking, over planning. The other place that you can get stuck is like kind of on the other side of overthinking, over planning, which is just like having idea orgasms all day or like, yeah. you know, shiny object syndrome, sort of like you're actually really close to this thing existing, to this thing being birthed into the world, to your, you know, your business being out there or to getting your first client or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, maybe this is like a better idea, you right. know? And the reason that we get stuck in, in this, this place is because the next zone is terrifying it's the courage zone mm. and that courage zone looks like a ring of fire and who the hell wants to walk through fire like i guess unless you're <laughs> tony robbins like a, <laughs> right, yeah, tony robbins exactly fire exactly walker. yeah fire walker but even still do you want to walk on mm. those hot coals or are you summoning everything you've got within you to walk on the, those hot coals. Like right. it's, it, it's not just like we, you know, when, if you're walking up to this like wall of flames, of course it's natural. Like, ah, you know, like, of course your creature animal wants to back up and like go back to where it's safe. And it's really safe in the anticipation zone and it's safe in the dissatisfaction zone and it's safe in the comfort zone. Um, but when there's something new that's calling you and you are like, why the hell am I stuck? Take a look at like, where are you? Like if you're in the dissatisfaction zone, you maybe aren't stuck. You're maybe just like something's still cooking, you know, yeah. or you're stuck because you're just choosing to feel sorry for yourself for too long mm. instead of to be inspired, to allow yourself to be inspired. Um, if you're stuck in the anticipa anticipation zone, have a look at like, what is your favorite flavor of um, mind trickery? <clears throat> is it confusion? Is it, you know, perfection? Is it like, what is it? Where is it that you are possibly just keeping yourself safe, swirling around the same information over and over again, going back to the drawing board, you know, all of that. Um, because the, the choice there is to like, keep doing that, or you can step through the courage zone and mm. stepping through the courage zone 
um, by definition takes courage. This is, this is where people say everything you want is on the other side of your comfort zone. It's really this exact stage right here. Mm. Um, and, but it's, it's not a, it doesn't make sense until you're there, right? Like if you're in the right. dissatisfaction zone, there's nothing courageous to walk through. Like you've got to, does that make sense? So yeah, absolutely. You haven't thought. graduated through that, the stages of expansion yet. Yeah, that's right. Why exactly. So far away in that sense. Yes, exactly. So if it's feeling so far away, it's kind of like, well, just look at where you are. And it's, and it's not that you're, you know, oh, you're not stretching your comfort zone. It's like, well, maybe just, I don't even, maybe I'm not there yet. Like, I don't know what I want. I'm just kind of feeling like something's amiss. And what is it? I don't know what action I want to take yet, you know? Um, and then, so the courage zone moving through that, that's like, it's, it's oftentimes like simple actions, but they're the ones that just make you, you know, your palms sweat a little bit. I call it like the pressing send moments. It's like you, mm. you, you press send on the email or you press publish on the blog post or the social media post, or you um, press send on the, on the phone, you press talk and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm calling that person. I'm, mm. I'm asking for that thing. You know? So it's like, um, you know, just when you're in that place, you can ask like, what is the thing? What is the one thing that scares the crap out of you that actually is the thing that would, that would move you through to your next reality? Because your next reality is on the other side of your courage zone. Mm. And so it's kind of like the more you take those press, you know, have those press send moments, the more you're, you're piercing through that. And then what happens is, when, as soon as you're on the other side of that courage zone, guess what's awaiting you? A new comfort zone. It's like a new meadow, a new field of daisies awaits on the other side of that courage zone. And that's why a comfort zone is not a bad thing. Like think about it. If you're going on like a hike and you're, you know, you're going up these cliffs and you're, you know, you're working and then you hit a horizon and you're like, let me like sit down and have some trail mix and look at the view. Like, that's the comfort zone. There's nothing wrong with that. And then once you're there, like what's cool is now in this new comfort zone and, and also, you know, in, a, in your new reality, like you're in a new reality, your capacity, it's basically like your capacity to hold more life has, has grown. Something that was in your courage zone is now in your comfort zone. Like, oh, I know how to make that phone call. I know how to like publish for the first time announcing what I'm doing on Facebook and I didn't die. Like I learned that. And so now, now that's part of your toolbox in your comfort zone. And so you can stay there as long as you want. And it might be like little blips, like, you know, your comfort, just acclimate for like a day and then do it again. It might be like you're in your comfort zone for a year. Like it just totally depends. And it depends what situation we're talking about. We could be talking about relationships. We could be talking about business. We could be talking about your fitness, like any of it. Right. Um, and so what happens is on the edge of that comfort zone, there's another dissatisfaction zone. Then there's another anticipation zone. Yeah. Then there's another courage zone. Like that's, that's the mechanics. It's just, it's just like a map of, mm. of how the process of expansion works. Right? Yeah. I, lo I love that, uh, you know, visual aid actually, because I, even as you're talking, I'm like imagining the circles and, and then it starts over again. It's like, you know, another version of that circle again, uh, because we're never really truly there right? Like, you know, a lot of people ask, I'm sure you get this all the time as well. It's like, oh, you know, you're there. You, you know how to launch these several, you know, successful businesses. You've been doing it for over a decade. Like nothing could scare you anymore. And that's not true because your comfort zone has changed as well. Your new right. normal has changed as well. My, mine included. I am still scared shitless to press and hit send most days. You know, yeah. every time I do anything new of any sort, which, you know, the five year ago me would have been like, holy shit, you did that. Uh, but the me now is like, yeah, I don't, yeah, you know, like, like this is not happening for me, you know? So um, I think it's, it's, it's good to, for people to know because when they compare themselves to successful entrepreneurs or people are ahead of them, that this cycle of breakthrough continues to happen ongoing for everybody. Like nothing yeah. is wrong with this. It's part and parcel of change and transition and expansion, right? Which I think is uh, uh, what we are really looking for when we want to be, feel alive. <laughs> yeah, know? totally. Right? Totally. Mm. So like, that's again, just another permission slip to not judge it. It's like, yeah. that is actually what it feels like to be alive. And if you can know, and you can see where you are in those zones of expansion, you can like just release the judgment and be like, oh yeah, this is what it feels like to be at the beginning of my anticipation zone. It's so exciting. And you don't need to like 
immediately judge yourself for not being there already. It's like, dude, you just thought of this idea yesterday. Like let yourself, you know, grow into it or whatever. Um, yeah. And I catch myself. I just recently caught myself like swirling around the anticipation zone. Like I'm like, oh, maybe I should change the color of that pop up box. Like I was seriously doing all these kind of things because I was like, oh yeah, because I'm scared shitless, and the courage mm. zone is what is is like. And and then at some point it becomes a choice. Yeah. Um, but what you're talking about doing this, it's basically doing this over and over and over again as long as we're alive. Um, that is what's called building what I call building, um, your breakthrough muscle, because mm. again, most of the world out there can be like comfort zone, dissatisfaction zone, the end, like there I am dissatisfied and waiting to die. Or yeah. you can build and grow your, um, your breakthrough muscle. And then it start. you know, it's like this. Yeah. Da, da, da. So we can, are you, um, so do you have anything else to say besides these, these four zones? Oh yes, just one more. Th I was talking about the um, I was talking about the the muscle, and I just wanted to say one thing about breakthrough mastery, and that's it. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know where this will where this will go, so I might repeat myself a little bit. But okay. Sorry. Okay. So you know we were talking about the you know the break. So the breakthrough building your breakthrough muscle is like doing that process over and over and over again. And like you said, you know, pressing send can be scary always because it's a new level of pressing send. But then there's also things you can think about that maybe used to scare the crap out of you five years ago that now they're, it's no big deal. Like doing a video interview, for example, or something right. like that. So what happens is the, as you start to do this more and more, your comfort zone starts to become bigger. And those other little pieces, those other little three zones, they shrink. They're just like blips instead of huge mountains. And so it's almost like, you'll see this in the visual if you have the, the worksheet in front of you, but it's like, it's almost looks like ripples in a pond. And if you look at the overall vision of it, the overall look of it looks more like that beautiful meadow just with these ripples. And that's, that's mm. breakthrough mastery. That's when you break through mastery where it's actually, you're getting comfortable with moving through those zones of expansion. It's like breakthroughs, the process of breakthroughs Ooh. is actually part of your comfort zone. Ooh. So if you think about people who are like Tony Robbins, we brought up or Oprah or like these people who have just been massively they're, they're what they can hold in their life, what they have the capacity to hold is pretty mind boggling. Like that would just, um, I don't know, like to think about what they've accomplished and what they can hold space for. And it's because they're, they're just masters of the breakthrough process like they're just like okay breakthrough 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 and it's just like this ripple of breakthroughs to where breakthroughs is just this almost like yep i get up i have my you know cereal for breakfast have a breakthrough no big deal <laughs> like it just becomes that that becomes part of your comfort zone yeah and so i think you know the breakthroughs or fear never ever I, i'm sure tony robbins oprah everybody and anyone i've ever yeah. interviewed that's done something amazing with their lives never say that they're not fearful of anything anymore for sure. they're fearful sure. of different things they move forward faster but it, it still all exists it's just as you said less of a mountain to climb and because because now you've practiced knowing what to do and also training your sort of fear mongering monster to not say that you're going to die when you do this thing. Because the last time you did this, as you mentioned, thinking about the last time you've done anything fearful and did it, um, you know, you didn't die. You know, something like this thing didn't blow up in your face. So you gain courage little by little as you keep doing small little things, having these mini breakthroughs rather than this explosion of a breakthrough of jumping off a cliff sort of thing, right? Because most of us, I think, yeah. aren't a jump off our, our cliff and hopes the parachute open type of people. We sort of need yeah. bite size ease in into courage uh, to take things, right? To, take, to, to make that change happen in our lives rather than this big change of like giving up our house, giving up our financial security all in one go, <laughs> right? Right. And, do that. Um, and I think that's, that's a really uh, big point to bring up because people do feel that they have to be a Tony Robbins or they have right. to be Oprah to make change, but actually majority of people are bite-sized steps, right? Um, now, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, when you talked about, um, you know, how do you become this master of a breakthrough because everybody can have that mastery when they exercise this muscle right of breakthrough um what do you think are some of the um 
ingredients that people have to include in their lives. So for example, um, is someone that is a true master of breakthrough, like their mindset is a bit different. Like, you know, they approach things differently. Maybe it's a different view of, of a perspective is how they turn things or, you know, like what Ryan Holiday says, um, the obstacle is the way, right? That stoic mm. look of uh, not looking at as an obstacle as a dead end or a shut door, but actually as an opportunity to go, well, let me take a look at this obstacle for in a 360 degree view and sort of go, where can I enter in to sort of just chip at it and pull it apart, right? So what do you think, like if I, we want to be true masters of our own breakthrough, what are the sort of things that we have to transform in the way we think or feel or say to ourselves that will then make this breakthrough a lot more uh, reachable for us? Yeah, I love that question. And actually, I feel like you shared so much wisdom in just the way that you asked the question, um, for sure. I like the conscious download. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, and, you know, one thing I would say is just this, you know, because you're right, we can't say, oh, Tony Robbins never experiences fear. Of course he does. Mm. And it's like, it's very, I, I think that's, that is actually one of the things is to realize that every single person, like, again, just sort of looking at the mechanics of breakthrough as this map, it's like, that is just how it is. Every single person has to go through that. And so you're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you, like, you know? And, and as far as like that, moving through those fearful moments, it's like the only, the only fear, you know, it's the, the whole word fearless kind of annoys me because it's like, no, you're not gonna be fearless. And if you're fearless, that probably means you're just hanging out in your comfort zone or dissatisfaction zone. And you're, you know, you will have fear and oh. courage is acting in spite of fear. Courage is not being fearless. And so it's okay. like really the only fear that you actually have to overcome is the fear of fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you yeah. just go, okay, fear can't kill me. Like I know, I know what fear feels like. It's not really enjoyable, but like I'm not going to let fear take me out. I'm choosing, I'm choosing to consciously approach fear. Like I love the obstacle is a way, is the way that's, mm. um, that's brilliant. And there, there's so much to say about this. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure where to take it. Cause I could probably talk for another like 20 minutes yeah. straight just on, on this. What, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I can, I think everybody, you know, when you talked about that zone of like from anticipation to courage, right? That was the sort of zone that most people have trouble kind of getting out from. Uh, and for me that, that, you know, as an overcome, you know, I, I think I'm still a perfectionist. I'm less of a perfectionist as I ever was. And, and perfectionism has actually given me actually a lot of positive things in my life and sort of knowing when to not activate that muscle mm -hmm. <laughs> and when to activate mm -hmm. it when it actually serves me and other people. Uh, yeah, so for great. me to go through from like, I'm, I'm interested to know about you as well, but I'll talk about how I've in the past uh, and currently moved from anticipation zone to um, courage zone is sort of a couple of uh, things that I always think about. One is imperfect action. So if anyone's mm -hmm. ever done a program with me in any way, they know, I, I repeat myself and they know this, they always say, mama bear, Lydia talks about perfect action all the time, <laughs> uh, is that, you know, because... I've been stuck here for many years uh, wanting to move perfectly, but actually clarity is in the imperfect action. So we yeah. cannot find out what is that next door, whether we like this thing we think we want to do for a business idea, whether or not someone's going to reject us as our first client. We won't know any of those answers of what we can do to improve that, uh, that, that outcome until we actually do the thing that we say we're mm -hmm. going to do. And, and mm -hmm. to know that and we can still come back from it. It's not going to completely kill us. We're still breathing. Our heart is still beating. We can go for it again. And nobody can really um, say that we can't do that. You know, it's ourself yeah. sort of put, imposes that, that rule that is a one-time deal. Like, I cannot fuck up. I have to do this mm -hmm. perfectly and everyone will be watching me. But actually, nobody's right. watching you. You're the only person imposing those boundaries upon yourself. That's the first thing, imperfect action. Love Moving it. with imperfect action. So when an when a idea hits you or an inspiration hits you, with, which happens, is to do something with it right away rather than wait mm. too long. And then we talk ourselves out of things and self-doubt. So yes. just that one thing. It's like telling a friend that you had that idea. You know, that can change. Yeah. Uh, uh, from just an idea in your head to actually something that, you know, you've told someone about, it makes it a lot more real or doing one little step, writing a blog post about this thing that just came to you, just like with you, with the mechanics of a breakthrough, right? You woke up three in the morning and just had this sort of like thing that you're like, I have to, and imagine you've just went back to bed. 
you know, but right. instead you like took out your laptop and went, I just have to do something. And that physical act of typing on your laptop or on a note or writing in a notebook, again, solidifies that idea and makes it real. Right. That's so, yeah. that's what imperfect action means for me. The second thing is, uh, another, uh, you know, a, a lot of my, my mastermind groups came up with this term called scare sighted. We hashtagged it. Yeah. 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 Scare sighted. And we had t-shirts made. Um, a really awesome um, uh, tribe member, Daniel Lim, made us these t-shirts and sent all the mastermind members all these t-shirts, uh, which was such a great reminder. I have my t-shirt I wear to bed every night. Uh, and it basically means like this zone of, um, you know, being scared and excited at the same time is the yeah. reason and the pure definition that there's something ahead for you. You know, yeah. that something exciting does come with scary too. You know, and yeah. actually it's in the combination of the both that you do it anyway, you know? Yeah. And in this scarcity moment, uh, I find this happens to me very often. And, and sometimes I think I can get, and I, I'm sure people can relate to, to this, is that when I get scared, sometimes there's a, a confusion where you can say, oh, if I'm scared of doing that, it must mean that I'm not ready to do it. Or that um, I'm not meant to do it. Because if I'm meant to do it, then it shouldn't feel so scary. I should just be like, mm. oh my God, I totally like, it's my calling, my purpose. Like I should be drawn mm. to it like fucking a magnet. But the mm. reality is that it doesn't feel that way. It actually feels like first you're like, oh, and then, oh, you know, and, and then you just, oh, oh you should make a t-shirt with that. Right. Like, oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you're not meant to do that. And so what I do in this case to make sure that I, I, I know this is true or not for me because yeah, some, some opportunities you could go, Ooh, I don't think so. And it's not meant for you. And you sort of go, I just don't want to do that. Right. And that's a very mm -hmm. different feeling. And so how I sort of think about whether or not that feeling is true, true, true fear of like, I don't like that person. Or I don't like that idea. It's against mm. my values. Or is it something that I'm just scared about, but I truly, truly want to do it? So I sort of like imagine that if I was some sort of like superhero and I put on this cape and it's this cape that I can, it's like a computer game, you know, or a video arcade game where you have eight lives, you can press reset at any time. And that if you do this thing, so, so let's say, you know, the fear you have is about speaking on stage, right? And, and, and pitching for a TEDx uh, spot, right? And, and the thought of that excites and scares you. And you sort of go, okay, if I can do that thing, and nobody would make fun of me. I would be brilliant. I can press reset at any time. This cloak of protection just makes me this perfect person on stage. Mm. Would I want to do that thing if I knew that I wouldn't be laughed at or I wouldn't fail? Mm. Right? I and love if, that. And if the answer is yes, then it means that I have to do it despite the fear. And it's that when I do it, one day, the second TEDx talk or the second speech I'm going to make will not feel as difficult. But it's me telling myself that despite the fear, I do truly want to do it. It's not something that's against my values or I think that I'm not ready for. It's just the idea of fucking up, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Making me stay here, right? But yeah. if that, was, that factor wasn't there, that's the thing that I truly, truly want. Uh, and that's yeah. really helped me to be good with this feeling of scare sighted and not look at it to mean I'm not supposed to do something, but that something is on the horizon and just something I have to figure out. So missing gaps of information, practice, uh, support that I need to get to that next level of expansion. What about Brilliant. you? Like how have you, what has been your little things that you've learned that brings you from anticipation zone to uh, courage zone? Yeah, I, I'm going to answer that, but I just want to comment really quick on what you said, because that scare sighted is on the outer edge of your anticipation zone. At the beginning edge of your anticipation zone, it's just straight excited yeah. because it's not scary yet because it's just this idea. And, it's, and, and, it, and, and again, like it's just always what happens when you're, when you're feeling scare sighted. That's, that's a really good sign. That's kind of the obstacle is the way thing because that means you're closer. Like yeah. if you just are only excited, you're like, Ooh, that'll be awesome. And I'm, I can make a million dollars doing that. And that'll be so cool. Like you're actually like, that's great. Like that's, that's like a part of it. But as you start getting closer to taking the actions, right. that's when, that's when it shifts to scare sighted. So, mm. um, and I just want to share one other, um, I love your superhero cape and you know, like, I think it's so brilliant. And I heard another one, this is from, um, Martha Beck. I don't know if you know who that is. Yes. Um, she's like life coach, um, superstar. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she talks about like, imagine yourself, um, going to a, a high dive, like a high diving board. That's, you know, so you're going to be standing up really high, looking down at the pool and that feeling of like, you know, you know, you're a kid at the pool. You want to go off the diving board cause that's fun. And it's also like, ah! You know, it's the, you're standing at the edge, your toes are off the edge and your whole body's like, ah! um, that she's like, imagine yourself walking up to that high dive and looking down at the water. And if the water is clear, that's just scare sighted. If the water is like murky or muddy, 
mm. that's that sort of like um, intuitive, uh, res- you know, that intuitive fear, which is like, this isn't right for me. Yeah. So I don't know, exactly. for, for, for so, those who are really visual, that's when yes. you play with too. Love that. Yeah. Um, for me, one of the things, um, sometimes for myself in my own life, I've gotten to the point where I'm just like defeated by the fact that I'm, I don't know, like there is this like defeat sort of when there's something I feel like, God, I feel like I've been doing all the right things. Like what's like, why is this still not working? Or like, you know, like, like really maybe I'm not cut out for this or like this self doubt comes in for myself. So what's interesting is that sometimes I allow myself to actually sink into that because it's one thing to be like, summon your courage, like go for it, go for it, like whip out your sword. And it's like, at some point that's freaking exhausting when it's like, uh, you know? And so what I've done, I call it just kind of, um, I guess if we want to name the strategy, it's called fuck it. (laughs) Um, or (laughs) fuck it all or let it die. (laughs) Um, so extreme, but really, um, when I just give myself permission to quit and it sounds funny because it's not, that's not the same as quitting. It's giving myself permission to quit Mm. because what happens is I can look at everything I'm doing and it's like, well, what if I just didn't like, what if, like, I don't know if you've ever had this, like for me as an entrepreneur, Sometimes I know it's a blessing because it's like this super creative pathway and like there's so much awesome magic that comes from entrepreneurship. And sometimes for me, it feels like a curse. I'm like, what is wrong with, why can't I just be satisfied with what everyone else is satisfied with? Like, why can't I just be happy waking up and driving in the traffic to some dumb job and coming home and like, why? Like, I hate being an entrepreneur. It's mean. (laughs) So, um, so anyway, but when I'm, when I'm, in that space, it's like, okay, what if I just gave myself permission to let it go? And, and it's not even a, it's not even just, it's like, take it even further than that. Like really go there. Like I've, I've gone on Craigslist and looked at jobs. Like what if I just seriously drop this and I went and I go and find a job and then, or I've just been like, what if I just stop doing any of it? What's very interesting is it's like any of the pieces that, that are misaligned or that are unnecessarily heavy or weighted they just kind of fall away and what remains is like the piece that actually is authentically aligned and true so it's kind of like a way to lighten up your business almost like actually release like you can you can stop doing certain things in your business if they're weighing it down or like I thought I had to do that I've just been doing it because I've always done it and then it's like oh I'm allowed to just not do that piece yeah. And then what would happen if I didn't then like, Oh my gosh, my energy could be available for this. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> but it's also like when I've let myself get to the point of fuck it, let it all die. What happens is what's, what's typically happens is it, it, it comes back to me. Even if I'm just like, I'm going to bed tonight. Like not even like, I'm just gonna wake up tomorrow. I'm like, I quit. I'm out. You know, it comes back to me because it's meant for me. Like it will always come back to me. I could go get a job on Craigslist and I could do that. And probably in, you know, a month in there, I'd be at home, like watching TV in the afternoon or, you know, in the evening, like everyone else. And I'd pull out a notebook and start like brainstorming this business. Cause it's going to come back to me because it's mine. Mm. So I don't know. Like, I, I think that there's something <clears throat> powerful, at least for myself in and just giving it permission to die and let it, Mm. let it go. And maybe, maybe really it is like for myself, my business before Elf Society was business heroin, um, which is a online um, magazine and entrepreneur training companies for women. I really did let that die. Like it wasn't, there was, it's not even like it was totally a hundred percent off, but it was like, it wasn't fitting anymore. And I was like, what if, what if I let it go? And what if I just stopped doing business altogether? And what's fascinating is what emerged, what was born from the ashes was Elf Society. Right. And it's not even like a hundred percent different, but at the same time it is because mm. it's, you know, it's like, it's these well, very subtle the things tweaks. that didn't work for you in business heroin anymore. It worked for you at some mm-hmm. point, not anymore. And then you right. brought your best right into this new business that is, you know, coming from your experience from business heroin and where your life is right now. 
You know? Yeah. And, and just into more alignment. It's sort of like yeah. letting it die or fuck it. It's just dropping any pieces that aren't a hundred percent aligned. Yeah. And maybe it was at the time, like it's the, sh yeah. the shedding of the skin, like the oh. snake that sheds its skin. That was its skin. You can't say like there was something wrong with that first skin. Like that was the skin, but then you shed the skin and there's, and there's something new. Yeah. Um, just, a, just a more, you know, a more aligned or a, a more true expression of it. Yeah, I do do something quite similar as well. Whenever I feel that heaviness that happens from a decision I have to make with my business or a direction for a new program or even my personal life, really, when it, it just feels really uh, heavy, I, I love the, the phrase of like, how do I let this be easy? That's always the question I sort of mm, ask. I like, not, not how do I make it be easy? Like, right. <laughs> you know, cause I'm a pusher. Uh, but it's like, how do I let this be easy? Like what would be the path of least resistance if I was to look at this with another pair of eyeballs? Like maybe it's not what I think I have to do, but what would I, what would be fun and what would be lighter and less of, uh, wanting to please every single person that I think I yeah. have to please, you know, what, like if I wasn't again, the same super Kate mentality is like, if I wasn't going to be judged and no one would say I'm, I'm a shitty person or, you know, judge me for this decision I'm going to make, what would I want to do? You know, what would feel better for me to release this program in a, in a way uh, that is going to be going to be valuable, but maybe not what everyone's asking for, but what I believe could be true for me to be the best coach or facilitator that I can be. And that has been quite a difficult realization for me because Oh my God, I could talk about a whole new, a whole, another training just on this topic, but because my <laughs> background of being an immigrant uh, child and being in a family of poverty, I've always been taught that getting to something I want or to be successful requires blood, sweat, and tears. So that's the yeah. definition. So if I don't feel hardness, hardness and difficulty and stress and anxiety, this thing, I don't deserve it. I have to feel mm -hmm. this way to get to this feeling of success. So that's been a pattern I have had to break and continue to have to break through myself because it's so embedded into my psychology, right? That's the yeah. feeling I have to get to receive money and success and um, you know, all the things that I want in my life. So the let it be easy, to be honest, once I started practicing this a lot more consciously anyway, mm -hmm. in the last probably like year to two years, I've, I've, you know, each time something happens magically, not because I've done more to get there, but actually done less, but yeah. in a much more sort of constructed way and sort of more conscious way, it's always ended up being amazing results. And always I sort of go, and I write in this journal to remind myself of this day, whenever they, they happen, it's like, oh my God, that actually felt easier to do. And it got me way more better results. And mm. I didn't have to give up sleep or give up my free time to do that, you know? And so yeah. that is, a, I think, uh, very similar to what you do, which is a, the fuck it or let it die. But it's like just dropping it, <laughs> just dropping that weight of armor for a minute and just feel what it would feel like if you were just to let it be easy. Let it. I right. love that. The distinction between make it easy and let it be easy is huge. Yeah. I was actually just at a yoga class a couple of days ago and I was telling my husband about this this morning because I was like, this, this yoga situation it actually has so much life wisdom. We are in this, um, we are kind of like partially upside down, whatever, and we're supposed to get our head to touch the floor. And he's like, don't try to move your head toward the floor. Mm. Just focus on your triceps and your rib cage and your head will naturally move to the floor. It was, um, it was, and, and it was so true. It was like, Oh, I like, I did kind of the, the little shift, very, very, very subtle shift in a different area of my body. And it was like, my body naturally went Poot, and like my head went more toward the floor. And I was like, that is freaking brilliant. Like as far as just even, you know, creating in our lives, it's like, what if it's not the like, pushing where we think we need to push yeah. what if it's like releasing some other thing that then just nat naturally allows us mm. to go there what if it's not about like trying to be the person you need to be but it's actually about releasing who you're not or releasing yeah. habits that are no not aligned with the real truth of who you are mm. so i don't have the answers it's more yeah. of an inquiry but for sure and i think yeah. it's so relevant to people watching this because all these people are in the beginning journey of starting a new life a new journey of reinventing their career there's a lot of unknowns that are happening and i think a lot of the times from this overload of information out there what we think we have to do looking at influencers that do an amazing job and trying to live up to their level of quality and you know whatever we see out there uh it can be quite challenging you know being in this stage of knowing what is good enough to put out there you know what is uh like when do i know i'm ready to put things out there mm -hmm. uh and and you know it, and this let it be easy analogy can be applied to very simple things like for example 
I have lots of people that always go, oh, I can't write the thing that I want to write or the, the, the mm -hmm. inspirational ideas that I have to write until I have this amazing WordPress blog that is beautiful and amazing. And I can't share my thoughts until that happens. But maybe the, the root of least resistance and the let it be easy is that how can you write this thing without this beautiful blog? Could you pick another platform, maybe medium.com that is actually just already there. You can have it up and running within three minutes, you know, mm -hmm. because the whole point is just putting your ideas out there and not to let something external like a blog like 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 keep you stuck from sharing this yeah. thing you want to share because you've added this extra you know truth of that i can't share my thing unless it's through a beautiful blog you know yeah. versus and by the time that be thing. yeah yeah and by the time that beautiful blog is done you're probably going to want to like change the colors or something and before well, you you know like the inspiration it, it will never be done you by. the inspiration right. has passed you by you know right. that always happens i feel um but yeah, yeah I, I, the, the let it be easy is so um such a such a big one i have it actually on my bathroom mirror uh taped on there when i brush my teeth mm. every morning it's like what can I, like everything not just business stuff but like in every relationship that i have and mm. with myself how do i let that be easy you know and, and move on from there yeah so mm. want to end um this little conversation with and honestly i could talk till another week for, with you <laughs> i know so it's always that way that's why we keep interviewing each other I it's know, so fun I to know. talk to you well thank you so much for sharing your time with us and your wisdom about the mechanics of a breakthrough uh we are going to make sure that everyone gets uh the resources and the worksheet and the visual aid that comes with this training uh so that you can follow along with it and of course uh think about what stage you're in and think about which zone you're in your breakthrough so that you know what to do next and i, I think the way you explained it moving from zone to zone uh that was really really um, helpful, I think, for people to know that nothing's wrong. There's just different things that I have to do here to move on to the next zone and sort of not skip steps, right? And think that they have to make these mm -hmm. huge, abundant leaps in order to get there and actually make them more bite sized, more doable, uh, and um, easing yourself into courage rather than jumping off the cliff, right? Which is yes. Um, yes. So, how can people find out more about what you do with Elf Society? Uh, and is there anything else that you think would be helpful for them to visit, uh, whether it's your website or resources to help them through their journey of transition as well? Sure. Yeah. So, a couple things. Um, one, so Elf Society is a is a membership of awesome people who choose to um, do life differently and step out of the hamster wheel existence and just be creative with what is possible. Um, you and I have like so similar of a message, Lydia. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome with our own flavors, of course, as, as of course. it goes. So anyway, um, membership for L Society enrollment opens twice a year. Um, so it's depending on when this is released, it may not be open right now, but because you're friends of Lydia, if you would like a super secret invite um, to sneak in the back door of L Society, Mm -hmm. um, I would love to have you. Um, so that is um, elfsociety.com slash screw the cubicle invite. Um, and then also if there's, there's another, uh, we put together what's called the not so distant now challenge. And that. this is something if, yeah, yeah. So if you're, if, if you're called to it, what that's really about is like your future is available to you now. Like your future isn't getting a little woo woo like it's about collapsing timelines and being like that future me is me and how do I integrate the two and become the future version of myself it mm -hmm. comes with an activation audio which is um, with my good friend Lisa Berkowitz who guides us through this process of actually tapping in to that future version of you mm. um, and bringing the wisdom into your now and also there's a whole um, guidebook that walks you through basically seven days of taking new actions for a new reality. And these are new actions that are given to you by yourself, by your own soul when you go through the not so distant now activation. So that's pretty cool. And that's totally mm. free. We'd love to have you um, as part of that too. So that's um, lsociety.com slash not so distant now. Perfect. Or have you the can link just ready to for people too. Perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, yeah, Lydia, thank you so much for having me. And thank thanks you. for, I, I love your, your peeps and I love you. So it's, a, yeah. An and, and honestly, like I said, we want, we will have you back soon. I'm sure because like we, we love hearing from you and actually everyone that ever hears a conversation between you and I have always said, I need to meet this Ann Perry and they just love, <laughs> we should have a talk show actually. <laughs> so maybe right at, in your problem. little, in my little lounge, up here, little lounge out there. Exactly. Your lounge. Perfect place for a talk show. <laughs> we'll see if we yes. do this with a bit of coconuts and some palm trees back.
back here. Yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. Thank you, Anne, <laughs> for coming through and uh, helping us with our breakthrough. Uh, and we're going to be able to put up the links and all the resources to get to Anne, all the free stuff that uh, she's mentioned uh, that will help you to uh, create more actions and recreate your reality uh, for that seven days challenge that I think is a, a lovely idea to actually be doing actually after this conversation as well. Thanks for joining yeah, us, Anne. Perfect. Thank you. Bye, guys. Awesome.